Hey guys, welcome to Adobe's Learn from the Pro series. My name is Kevin Elaserna, and I'm a video creator based in Cebu, Philippines. I am very excited to share to you these next five videos that I created with Adobe, as I will be teaching you all of my editing tips that I use all the time in Premiere Pro. So for our first video, I'm going to show you how to get started in Premiere Pro as a complete beginner by teaching you everything you need to know to start and finish and edit in under 15 minutes. Make sure to follow through all of the tips that I will be teaching in this video as I use these techniques all the time in my editing workflow to create my best content with speed and ease. And without wasting any more time, let's go to Premiere Pro and let's start editing. So first thing that we have to do is we have to create a new project in Premiere Pro. Now in order for us to create a new project, all we have to do is to click the new project button. Let's name the project to video commercial tutorial. Then browse for your video assets folder. Then just click one video. Then press Ctrl plus A on your keyboard to select all of the videos. Now all we have to do is rename the sequence and let's name it to main sequence for now. Once you're done, just click create. And now you have successfully created a new project and a new sequence. As a beginner, all these panels can seem a little bit overwhelming at first. So let's just get started with the basics. So this first panel is our program monitor where we can see our video preview. Next, this is our source and effects controls panel where we can control the various effects of our clips. Now below here, this is our project panel where we can see all of our imported clips. Next, this is our effects panel where we can search for various effects and transitions in Premiere Pro. Now the bottom panel is our sequence, and this is where we could see our entire video timeline. Now that you know the basic panels in Premiere Pro, let me now introduce to you the different layouts of these panels that we call as workspaces. Now to see the various workspaces in Premiere Pro, all you have to do is to click this icon, and now we can see all of the default workspaces in Premiere Pro, like learning, assembly, editing, color, effects, and many more. Now considering that our video is vertical, let's select the vertical workspace, and as you can see, Premiere Pro automatically changed the layout of the panels to a vertical workspace. Now that you know how workspaces work, let's now focus on our video timeline. Now the video timeline is basically where you can find all of your imported clips. And if you want to zoom in or zoom out in this timeline, all you have to do is to click and drag the horizontal scroll at the bottom. Now another way to zoom in and out of your timeline is to press on the plus or minus key on your keyboard. To zoom in, you can press the plus key on your keyboard multiple times. And now to zoom out, you can also press the minus key on your keyboard multiple times. This is a quick and easy shortcut, so keep this in mind as you will use this shortcut all the time. Now that you know how the video timeline works, it's now time to start editing our clips. Now all of these footages in my video timeline are just raw clips from a recent product commercial that I shot in my studio. So what I usually do to start off my edit is to delete all of the unusable clips. And in order for us to do that, all we have to do is to scan through our video timeline using the playhead and once I see a clip that is not usable, all we have to do is to click on the clip, then press delete on your keyboard. Now I just do the same method for the rest of my clips, and this is just a way for me to stay organized by deleting all of the unusable clips right away. This simple method just ensures that our video timeline is free from clutter, so we could have a more efficient editing workflow. Now that we're done deleting all of the unusable clips, let me now introduce to you a command that I use all the time, and it's called ripple delete. As you guys can see, after deleting all of our unusable clips, we now have blank spaces in our video timeline. Now instead of manually moving each clip to the left, all we have to do is to right click on the blank space, then press ripple delete. Now what ripple delete basically does is it deletes the blank space in our video timeline, as well as automatically shifting all of the clips to the left. Ripple deleting has to be one of my most used commands in my editing workflow, so make sure to remember this command and implement it to your editing workflow as well. Now instead of ripple deleting all of the gaps one by one, an easy way for us to clear all of the gaps is to go to sequence, then select close gaps. And as you can see, all of the gaps are now cleared. Now that we know how ripple delete and close gap works, we are now left with all of the clips that we're going to be using in our edit. Now to cut out the starting point and ending point of each clip, we can use the razor tool by clicking on this icon. And all we have to do is to find the starting point of your clip using your playhead, then click on the point to create a cut. Next, go to the ending point of your clip using your playhead and click on the point to create another cut. Once you're done, click this icon to select the selection tool. After that, you can now select the unusable clips and press delete on your keyboard. Now another simple method to cut our clips is by going to the starting point of your clip, then just click and drag to your desired cut point, and you're done. You can also do the same method to cut out the ending point of your clip, and now you know two simple ways to cut clips in Premiere Pro. Now let's just do the same method for the rest of the clips, Make sure to scan through all of the clips one by one, and once you're done, don't forget to go to sequence and select clear gaps to clear all of the gaps on your video timeline. 
Now that we have clean cuts of each clip in our video timeline, we can now proceed to importing our music in Premiere Pro. All you have to do is to drag and drop your music file from your folder to the video timeline, and you're done. And now that you have imported your music, you can now begin cutting each clip according to the beat or the vibe of your music. Now there are certain instances that our video is too slow or too fast to match the pace of our music. So what we have to do is to change the speed or duration of the video. Now all we have to do is to right click on our clip and select speed or duration. Then let's set our speed to 120% to speed up our clip, then just click OK. And now our video is sped up, but going through the video, I think I need to speed up the clip even more. So let's go back to speed or duration, then let's set the speed to 150%, then just click OK. Now let's try to compare the clip at normal speed and at 150% speed. And that's perfect for me. And now you know how to set the speed or duration of your clips in Premiere Pro. Now another useful effect in Premiere Pro that I use all the time is Warp Stabilizer. Now considering that this commercial is shot handheld, it is definitely inevitable to have shaky footage. Now in order for us to fix shaky footages in Premiere Pro, all we have to do is to go to our effects panel, then search for Warp Stabilizer. Once you're done, just drag and drop Warp Stabilizer to the clip that you need to fix, and now Premiere Pro will automatically detect, analyze, and stabilize your footage. And we're done. Now if you notice some warping in your video, you can always reduce the smoothness of the Warp Stabilizer in the effects control panel to reduce the warping issue. And now let's try to compare the clip before Warp Stabilizer and after adding Warp Stabilizer. And as you guys can see, Premiere Pro did a great job in stabilizing our footage. And now you know how to stabilize your shaky footage in Premiere Pro. Now say you want to zoom in or zoom out a specific clip in your video timeline. All you have to do is to select the clip and go to the effect controls panel. Now in here you can see that we can adjust the scale of your clip by clicking and dragging the scale number to the left or right. Now for this clip, say I want to begin or start scaling at a specific point during the clip to add visual interest. All you have to do is to go to the starting position where you want the scaling to start and click on the stopwatch icon to create your first keyframe. Next, move the playhead to the point where you want the scaling to end and all you have to do is to adjust the scale of your footage and Premiere Pro will automatically set a second keyframe for you. And now you just made your first keyframe animation. Now let's not stop there and let's try to smoothen this keyframe animation. So all you have to do is to right click on the second keyframe, then select Ease In. Once you're done, right click on the first keyframe, then select Ease Out. And now you have a smoother keyframe animation. Now let's try to compare the clip before the keyframe animation, after adding the keyframe animation, and lastly after adding Easy Ease in our keyframes. And now you know how to create simple keyframe animations in Premiere Pro. Now let's proceed with our next editing technique which is called speed ramping. Now we already discussed about how to set the speed or duration of our clips, but now let's try to get a little more advanced by showing you how to transition the speed of your clip from slow to fast. Now first right click on the effects icon at the top left of your clip, then go to time remapping and set it to speed. Now all we have to do is to hold control on your keyboard, then click on the line where you want the speed ramp to take effect. Now for this clip I want to speed up the starting point, so all I have to do is to click, hold and drag the line upwards to speed up this part of the clip. While jagging, you can easily visualize the speed increase percentage here, and once you let go of your mouse, you now successfully created a new speed ramp. Now let's try to play back the clip, and see how the speed changes from fast to slow as soon as we cross the speed marker. And now to smoothen the speed ramp, just click and drag the speed marker to create a downward slope, which by the way looks like a ramp, to create a smoother speed ramp. Now to smoothen this out even more, we can click on the speed marker again, and click and drag this lever to create a smoother transition. And you're done. Now let's try to compare the clip before the speed ramp, after adding the speed ramp, and lastly after smoothing out the speed ramp by adjusting the length and slope of the speed marker. And now you know how to create speed ramps in Premiere Pro. Now that I'm done editing the entire timeline, it's time to add color to the video. So first, click this icon, then go to the color workspace. Next, go to the projects panel, then click this icon to create a new item, then click on adjustment layer. Now all you have to do is to drag and drop the adjustment layer on top of your videos, and make sure to extend the adjustment layer so all of the videos below it would be affected. An adjustment layer is a layer whose effects will affect the very clip or clips under it in the timeline. We often use adjustment layers to apply the same effect to multiple clips, and that's why I use adjustment layers to color grade all of the clips in my timeline all at once. Now all we have to do is to go to the Lumetri Color panel, go to Creative, then click Look. Just select Browse, and now I'm going to be importing my custom LUT for the video. Now the word LUT is basically called as Lookup Table, and it is basically a color preset for videos. Now LUTs are generally used to color correct your videos, but some LUTs are also used to color grade your videos. This is just a fast and efficient way for me to color grade my footages for social media, and I use this method all the time. 
Now that we're done editing and coloring our video, we can now proceed to exporting. Now all we have to do is to click export. Let's rename the file name to video commercial. And I just use the default preset. Then I also use the H.264 format. Now to set the bitrate for our video, all we have to do is to go to video, click more, set it to VBR1 pass. Then I just set the target bitrate to 50. Setting the bitrate encoding to VBR1 pass will basically encode our video with only a single pass which is much faster to export and having a bitrate of 50 for a video to be posted on social media is already enough and will render a high quality image to avoid video quality compression. Once you're done, just click export and you're done. Now that we're done exporting, let's try to see the finished commercial that I created using all of the tips that we learned in this video. <music> And that wraps up our first video in this series. If you made it till the end of this video, comment down below your favorite tip and make sure to drop a like in this video if you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for our next episode as I will be teaching you all of my favorite quick and easy shortcuts to make your editing faster in Premiere Pro. Don't forget to create more and I'll see you in the next one. Paalam!